So if I get this recorded, it'll be recorded, like, literally just in time. Um, but let's see how it goes. So this is part two and of my response to you, Church of SCFU. Wow, that rhymed. Anyway, um, this is going to be... Going to be... This is going to be uh, probably shorter, as my next sections up till my conclusion are pretty short. Um, so my conclusion is going to be kind of long. Um, not terribly long, but long in comparison to my other sections. Um, yeah, so let's let's get started. Um, so you talk about corporations in a free market, um, which makes, um, which which made me, you know, th this section is something I call corporations in a free market, uh, leading markets to be a fairy tale. Um, or that's basically what you were saying. Corporations in a free market make free markets a fairy tale because you can't have a free market if you have corporations. Or you're just criticizing markets in general for having corporations. Now, again, this is just more left conflationism. Left libertarians, such as myself and you as well, don't support corporations now or in a truly free society. The difference between us, however, is that you think marketplaces are untenable because it will breed monopolies. And this is not a practical sort of solution for the anarchists. My friend Stargazer. Uh, has done a pretty good video on that topic and how this fear is largely a myth. And I'll link that in the description. I'm not going to get too much into it. Uh, I've already sort of alluded to it. Um, and uh, Roy A. Child's essay, as well as Tr Stromberg's uh, essay, as well as Kevin Carson's work, all show how corporations wouldn't exist in a free market. Uh, and there's a lot more work where that comes from, too. And um, I'll suggest a website at the end that will give you a lot more, too. So you talk about money power and capital power. Um, I suggest you look at the four monopolies Benjamin, talks, Benjamin Tucker talks about in State Socialism and Anarchism, like I talked about before. Again, we as market anarchists, and yes, as left libertarians, seek to end all four. And I mean we as in me and the other people who identify as market anarchists. Clearly you don't. You just identify as a left libertarian, which I think is good. Uh, in favor of a marketplace where economic power doesn't, doesn't have one class of people over another. I'm interested in seeing why you think this would happen necessarily every time, no matter the incentive, political, economic, uh, or economic structure, or whatever sort of structure. Now you say, show me the market where dot dot dot, and I have to stop you right there. Well, naturally, I can't show you any sort of marketplace where um, they, it doesn't, eventually you don't have a lot of disparity in wealth and stuff like that. I mean, I might be able to, but I'm not going to do that research. Um, and the reason being is because you're just pulling more left conflationism again. And, and I swear, I'm not trying to do this as like a catch-all answer to all of your criticisms, because your criticisms are valid, um, and I do say things after I say you're being left conflationist, so I'm trying to make it a substantial thing, or at least link to other substantial things. Like, I'm trying to point out what you're doing, and then I'm trying to point out why it's wrong apart from what you're doing, um, or apart from what I think you're doing. Um, but really, there's never been a truly free market in history. Not not the sort of free market I advocate as a left libertarian or any left libertarian advocates, to my knowledge. I mean, at least not in the whole entire interlocking system that constitutes a truly free market. You know, you have societies in the past that may have had you know legal systems that may look a lot like what um, I may advocate, um, but you don't have the whole shebang. Um, so I really can't show you the marketplace where such and such and such and such. Um, because number one, I don't support such marketplaces that have existed historically for the most part. I mean, certain parts of them I might, but that doesn't mean I support the whole thing. Uh, and the other part of that is that, you know, you're just, um, you're conflating, you know, current existing power structures with power structures that I actually, and I don't mean power structures as in top-down power structures, I mean just people having power in general, you know, having this, having autonomy and control over their own lives. Um, I don't mean power as in top-down hierarchy or control. Um, I'm, by the way, not uh, morally opposed to top-down hierarchy. I just find it more than likely it'll be phased out in an anarchist society, and it's uh, mostly unnecessary, I think. I don't think hierarchy is needed for the most part, um, and especially in the workplace. Um, there's a certain extent, I think, to which hierarchy may be needed, but I'm skeptical of that as well. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Um, so you talk about uh, the major benefit of the big players, and you say the state isn't that, or you say that you know the the state isn't the major benefit of the big players, and basically you just try to deny 
uh, that there's this big, huge relationship between the two. I mean, it seems like that to me anyway, and, and I'm curious about why you do this, because it seems pretty obvious to me, especially to leftists in general, like myself and you, um, that big business and uh, government does benefit from each other. Um, so then what is the major benefit? What gives the banks the bailouts? What bailed out the banks? The big businesses? What gives them subsidies, licensing fees um, to the little guy? Makes the regulations that big businesses, big businesses beg them for from the, uh, from the politicians like Roy Childs and Strongberg explain so that little businesses can only you know flounder or not even thrive at all or even exist. Um, I mean, they can, but to a marginal extent or to the extent... Um, that's you know um, cost prohibitive or it's it's um, a lot worse off than the big corporations are and companies it's the government really it's the government that does all these things and I think you denying this shows that you haven't gone far enough in your analysis of the relationship between big business and government or for that matter business and government as well now, I'm trying to be condescending and I apologize if I said it like that because I think I did maybe but anyway I'm not trying to say that uh, I just think you need to go deeper in your analysis um, so you say that you know you don't want a small group of people owning property and having control over other people, and you say the same thing as government, or, or at least we wouldn't want you know a small group of businesses owning you know other people and stuff like that. Basically, we agree that both types of these ruling classes are not productive towards a free society. So I'll move on from there. Blowing up the world equals temporary economic advantage. This is something I think you literally said, and I'm having trouble ascertaining I'm blinking a lot because I'm like what you literally said I think that after World War two um, things became more productive uh, and there's a reason for that outside of um, well World War two isn't the reason why things got so productive and I hope you don't believe that because that would mean war can be productive towards economic advantage and I think as a leftist you would really have to oppose war especially in that sense um, but I do want to say that blowing up the world does not give equal economic advantage. Um, I suggest you check something out called the broken window fallacy, because what you're doing here is an egregious case of this fallacy. Like, this is huge. Where you say that just because, um, you've been, you broke something, uh, this gives productivity to the people who are trying to fix it. Or just because you... Um, break a certain state of affairs, a new certain state of affairs would happen that wouldn't happen otherwise, or something like that. Um, so I'll link uh, a in the description a YouTube video about um, the broken window fallacy. Um, and I haven't reviewed it. I mean, I've, I've watched it before, but so, you know, it's not like I had never watched it. I just haven't watched it recently. So I might not link it, but I'm going to watch it, and if I like it, I will link it. Most likely, I will link it, but I'm just saying, if I don't, that's why. Um, so moving on. Uh, this is the last part before my conclusion. Uh, workers' rights. You say, we fought for workers' rights. I'm confused. Who is we? Did you fight for workers' rights? When did you fight for workers' rights? Um, you're sort of collectivizing. You're, you're speaking collectively. You're using the royal we. Um, and that's sort of a terminological fallacy or problem that sort of reveals a more... If I can psychoanalyze for a second, and please forgive me for doing so, because I could be completely wrong and make an ass out of myself. But... It does seem to me that, uh, and, I, and I'm saying seem, and I'm saying to me because, you know, I could be completely wrong, and but anyway. Um, it does seem to me that using collective language like we, or, you know, we the United States, or, you know, we, uh, not we support the troops, but, you know, we are the government, etc., etc., is a false idea of what it means to be a collective, or what it means to have a stake in a in society and so on so um i don't i think that might you know reveal a bit more of problems with with your analysis than um than other than what uh, than besides what i've been saying otherwise so conclusion i think these are your main problems i wrote them out only a half an hour ago i haven't looked them over um these were just the things off the top of my head i hope you don't take any offense but this is just what I see as your main problems. Let's try to work them out. Let's discuss them. Let's see if we can hash this out. So, and I'm all in favor of that, of course. Wouldn't be making this video response if I didn't. So, you have a lot of left conflationism. While I respect a lot of your arguments, and I often see where you're coming from, and even agree at some level at, at the end of things, you're not realizing that the current system of power is multi-interlocking multi in certain ways. 
One of those ways is big business and government coming together and helping the other, stabilizing one or the other's economic, uh, economic power for businesses or political power for the government. And they're using that power over others. We both, we both oppose these things. As a market anarchist, I am both opposed to economic and political domination of any sort, and as an anarchist in general, and you, you as well, I suppose, or, or I'm sure, um, at least insofar as I see it as such. Uh, what I mean is we may disagree what, is, what domination is or what it is not, but we'd most likely agree on what constitutes the definition of domination at any rate, or maybe we just disagree more on uh, applying the principle of domination than the principle what constitutes the principle of domination itself. I hope that wasn't too confusing. I apologize if it was. Um, I'm not always the best with my wording, but um, I will reword that if you'd like. So you're mistaking tools as users. Um, the problems of capital, economic power, wealth, etc. are problems that have more to do within the incentive structure that the user is in with, uh, ex um, instead of the user itself, which is what you're saying, or, or the, the tool itself. If the incentive structure is such that big businesses or the capital or property or the people that hold all this property and capital is not going to be pun punished or, um, from the consumers or from uh, or they're not going to take losses uh, and instead they might even profit from doing the bad thing then um, it's they're almost going to be limited to a meaningless extent and they don't really have to worry about you know doing bad things I encourage you to read Kevin Carson's article, In a Truly Freed Market, BP Would Be Toast, as in uh, Big Petroleum Oil Company or uh, whatever, BP Oil. And to also take note of the limited liability that corporations like BP have and the general eco e ecological uh, damage, uh, environmental, or damage to their communities um, that people have to deal with and that people try to try to deal with through the legal system, but the legal system usually shuts them down. Um, and corporations also shut down local businesses, and local businesses obviously can't do much about, you know, a place like Walmart, um, which shuts them down. Uh, at least I, I've heard that's the case, and I've read it here and there. I'm not sure how true that is. It's been disputed. Anyway. Anyway. Um, I believe that, you know, these problems not only come from mistreatment of the bosses and not only the incentive structure of the top-down hierarchies and big corporations, which come from the state, but also from the state subsidizing these hierarchies. And there's a good Kevin Carson article on it, but it's pretty long. I'm not going to link it to you. I've linked enough things to you. Now, I'm not trying to say, and this is an important point, I really want you to listen, I'm not trying to say that the state is the bad guy all the time and there's no other enemy. That's not the case at all. Um, as you insightfully point out, and what I think many libertarians sadly miss, is that capital, property, and more, things like that, can all be used to further exploitation, subjugation, and domination of the individual. But I do think you're also missing the point about the state, so I'm trying to reinforce that for you, and that's why I keep repeating it. A communication issue, I think, is the last one of your, our, our main problems, or your main problems. The last main pr problem I want to mention is that we certainly have some communication issues, because when I talk about the marketplace as not being coercive, I certainly don't mean a marketplace dominated by governments or by big corporations. Neither seem legitimate to me. Instead, I favor a much more pluralistic, anarchic social order that is more bound to people's free choices that are actually as free as they can get and not within the context of state capitalism, instead of their currently largely ar current largely artificial ones. Also, I'm still unsure what coercion constitutes and how it can apply within the context of the entire system of markets unilaterally. We certainly agree that markets can be and currently are co coercive, but why must they always be so? I've done my best to refute those things and others, so what else is there? If you wish, however, to continue positing such things um, like you know, wealth disparity, monopolies, or big corporations, then by all means do so if you feel like they're still legitimate. I encourage you to go to all-left.net and check out the writings there. I think you'll find left libertarianism is very much reconcilable with the marketplace. C4SS.org, it's .org, I'm pretty sure, um, is also a great place to go to. Um, so I thank you, and yes, it is .org. And I thank you for um, your time and everyone else's time. I really appreciate it, and uh, I hope we can continue this debate and learn from each other. Um, I'm open to the idea that the marketplace is coercive if you can somehow give me the evidence. So that's all I'm asking for. Um, I look forward to your response, Church of SDFU. Thanks.